So this is a uh, Kane and May uh, Quintox auction and uh, combustibles analyzer that monitors also NOx. That is NO and NO2, and the combination of those two is NOx, and it'll measure SO2. It uh, measures the actual duct pressure, it measures oxygen, it measures carbon monoxide, calculates carbon dioxide. So when you were looking at the graphs, uh, when you were first starting through combustion, you had some efficiencies in there. And it also has measures the temperature right here on a thermocouple. And if you want, you can apply a second thermocouple and measure the inlet temperature so it'll actually give you the differential and calculate the efficiency of the, of the combustion in the boiler. I'm going to take this through a calibration right now. One of the funny little idiosyncrasies about this guy, and it's not in books, is that if you have this thermocouple, which is ungrounded, connected in there, it will fault. It will not start up properly. So you always remember to disconnect the uh, blue gas thermocouple, which is actually on the probe. Disconnect the sample coming from the probe, so it's pulling fresh air in, and then it's going to calibrate itself. So I'm going to turn him off. Then I'm going to turn him back on again. Okay. I heard it come on. And I've got to go down and select Quintox Control. And then I hit the Enter button. And away it goes for 300 seconds, basically doing a calibration. So it's going to calibrate the O2 analyzer or O2 cell to 20.9%. Uh, it's going to calibrate the carbon monoxide cell to zero, the NO cell to zero, the NO2 cell to zero, the SO2 cell to zero. Um, now, if I can point over, there's a, the oxygen probe is actually here. This is the oxygen sensor cell itself. That's a chemical cell. And uh, um, they are fairly fragile. If you get any water coming over, you're going to fry this. But not only this, down inside the analyzer here, is where the CO cell sits, the NO cell, the NO2 cell, and the SO2 cell. And if you happen to get moisture coming in and it gets into those cells, it costs almost as much as a brand new uh, uh, analyzer. It's about $5,000 worth of parts. If I look over to the side here, there is a filter, and that's a coalescing filter. So flue gas is going to come down this hose, which is connected up at the probe at the top, and it's going to drop the water out and then you're going to get just a dry sample coming out of here going into your actual uh, analyzer itself so we got 210 seconds to go so we'll... okay so i'm down to four seconds left in the calibration two one zero now it wants to know what fuel i'm set up for which i'm set up for natural gas i'm going to fire natural gas first so i hit the enter key and it's got an instability factor which typically goes up and then comes back down again. If it keeps going up, it means you've got a, the O2 cell is shot. Um, when I hit O2, it's going to come up with an error, and the error is net temperature, and that's because I've still got the thermocouple disconnected. So when I now connect up the thermocouple, the fault should go out, and it's showing me a net temperature of minus 0.1. And what it's saying is that the uh, the temperature, what's going up now? Temperature up at the, just up above us, and it's, it's just lying on the deck up there. The sensor is not in the, in the stack, and I should talk about that in a minute. Um, it means it's 0.2 degrees C higher up there than it is here because it's using the temperature sensor inside the analyzer as as its reference, and then it's comparing the thermal the flue gas temperature to that. If I now connect the air in. I'm going to be pulling sample off the deck and it's now reading 20.9. I'm going to go to the um, NOx page, the NO2 page, and let's see, oh, NO, there we are. So this is NO and NO2, which is zero, which should be because we're just measuring air, so there's none there. But you'll see that eventually come up, and if I go to NOx, Oops, that was this one. 
the NOx is zero, the NO is zero, and that means the NO2 is zero because NOx is the sum of NO plus NO2. Um, and we can also measure uh, sulfur dioxide, which is showing as nothing, which it should be. Now, the thing to watch with this guy is that if you accidentally hit the on-off button instead of the pump button, and we typically do turn the pump on and off, you accidentally hit the on-off instead of the pump button, what will happen is going to shut down. If you start it back up again, it's still measuring sample gas in the stack, and so now it's going to say, oh, that sample gas in the stack has to be 20.9 because it thinks that it's in air. So you have to make sure you pull the probe back out, put it in fresh air, then do a calibration during startup, and then put it back in the stack. The other thing to watch for is to make sure that the water level in here doesn't climb. Uh, you can actually spin this guy off of here and literally dump the water out. And it's kind of interesting, the water always is sort of pink in color, which you wouldn't expect with flue gas, but uh, that's typically dye coming out of the refractory in the boiler itself. Okay, so that's basically it for this guy. I'm going to shut him off. We will be using this guy for reference purposes. This is, before you shut this off, this guy is uh, an extractive analyzer, whereas the one that's over here is closed coupled extractive. And you need to think about uh, how should those values match up. Should this be exactly the same as that one, because they are measuring from the same point, or should they be different? And that's something to reference back in your notes and have a good close look at, because we're going to have a discussion about it. Okay, that's good. So we did have this guy factory calibrated uh, just a, a month ago, um, and that came in at about $3,500, because there was a number of cells that had to be replaced, um, and then the actual calibration itself. Secondly, there is a printer here which prints out a tick little ticker tape. And this is the one that I got when I just did the calibration. And it says the O2 was at 20.8, the CO was at zero, the pressure in the stack was at 0.03 millibar, uh, efficiency was at 59%. Well, there's no fire in there right now, the water shut down. Uh, excess air was sitting at 20%, CO2 was at 0.1, uh, and NO was at 0, NO2 was at 0, NOx was at 0, SO2 was at 0. And you can actually get a hydrocarbon sensor, I didn't add it to this particular analyzer, but you could have a hydrocarbon sensor in there which would pick up unburnt methane gas or something like that. Okay, that's good.